TS Prof sent me one of their KO3 sharpening systems for free. As long as I reviewed it on the channel, I told them any review would be frank and honest, and they still agreed. Technically, however, this video is still a paid promotion because their sharpener was free. It comes in this rustic looking wooden crate that's actually lightweight and can be used to repack, store, and move the system. Mine came with styrofoam packing, which can be reused if cared for, but I think a durable form-fitted open cell foam would have been nicer. Then again, in 10 years, I've only packed or moved my other sharpeners a couple of times each, so I don't know. Let's get things out of the crate and put together at light speed. I've used many sharpening systems in the past, including a Tormac wheel, Lansky, Spyderco Sharp Maker, WorkSharp, Japanese Water Stones, Arkansas Stones, Shapton Glass, and most recently an $800 Wicked Edge system with a granite base and carrying case. I've avoided the TS Prof system in the past for two reasons. Number one, they looked flimsy, and number two, they looked complicated, like they would make sharpening an intellectual chore, when all I want to do is just sit down and start sharpening. So I have to say I could not have been more wrong. It looks more complex than it is. This only took me about 10 minutes to assemble out of the box. If I had to do it again, it would take, I don't know, 90 seconds. The main unit can be detached from the base and clamped to a table for added portability. The provided clamp wasn't tall enough, so I just used my own. The stones provided for testing were the silicon carbide stones, which we'll talk more about later. In general, they were a pleasant surprise. Now let's get on with it. So how shallow an angle can you sharpen before the stone starts clipping the knife holder? This is about 9 degrees, and it's got clearance, you know, way up here with the blade this close to the holder. And when it's this far away, the angle is shallower, but um, slightly shallower but it's also further away from the corner of the angle, so it's got clearance there too. TS Prof says they calibrate each unit prior to shipping, but there's still some things to check before your first use. First, you want to check the tension on the main blade arm flipping mechanism. Tension can be adjusted with this knob here. If it's too loose, sharpening the knife will click it and try to flip it over. Here's how you adjust the angle up and down. Don't forget to tighten this locking screw or your angle will drift while sharpening. Next, if you have one, you want to use an angle finder. You put it on the housing here to zero it and then you put it on your abrasive holder rod and lower the rod to the blade. Ours shows 13.75 degrees and the mechanical angle finder should be within a tiny margin of error. Ours looks spot on. One of the calibration we need to do, we can set an angle finder on the base and zero it, and then bring it up to our sharpening arm, make sure that it's zero or close to zero. They say it doesn't have to be right at zero. To make sure that it's parallel with the base and so we're not tilting our knife too much one direction or another. For a short knife especially, I'm not sure that it's all that important. But the other way, without an angle finder, you can do is you can just measure the distance between the base and the top of the sharpening arm from side to side. Make sure they're equal. If it needs to be adjusted, this screw uh, opens up and this then moves freely and you can tilt it one direction or another until you're correct. The next thing is to restrict the travel of the stone on the abrasive holder arm. You don't want it coming this way, too far this way, and the stone getting up on the knife. So you restrict the travel so it can't go up on the knife and you can't cut your finger. Same coming this way. You don't want it flopping off the bottom of the knife. You adjust the length of travel by adjusting these two springs. The distance between them is obviously the length of travel. This is a parking utility. This is used to pick the rod up, set it in here, and park it so it just stays in one spot. How thick a blade will the KO3 accommodate? Well, as you can see, the knife clamps will accommodate Something just over a quarter inch, if you stretch them out, they can probably get to 5 sixteenths. This housing back here holds some more adjustment points that I don't care about because everything works great, so I chose to ignore them. I suppose if your package was delivered by Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, you might have to get into those. So we're going to clamp our first knife here and get started. Uh, it feels like things are moving a little slow, but after looking at the TS Prof website, I realized these stones are water stones. So it only takes about a minute to soak each of them before they're ready. Let's get them in the water and see if they do better.
I don't see any water droplets or slurry droplets or anything flying off the blade, which is sort of what I was worried with, with watering the silicon carbide, but that, you know, it's pretty neat. It leaves a little bit of sludge right here along the edge, but that's it. And it seems to be taking material off a little quicker. That's good news. I'm going to use an old strop that I've had forever, but TS Prof sells uh, oak, like an oak block that you can use for diamond paste or diamond film. They also sell these aluminum blanks that you can put your own strop or material on. And you should know that there's a website out there that does sell pre-made strops and synthetic and natural stones that go way up to an ultra fine finish for the TS Prof system. Uh, I'm sure you can Google that. Man, that was sharp. So I know it says a thousand grit and grits vary manufacturer to manufacturer, product to product, material to material, but that thousand grit, uh, you know, it performs closer to 1500 or 2000 grit as far as I'm concerned. I um, haven't liked carbide in the past when I've tried it for various things. I thought it moved pretty slow, but once those stones were wet, they actually moved pretty fast. And so I, I you know, I was toying with the idea I'd like diamond stones better. I don't. I, those stones absolutely perform incredibly well. I understand why they're a little more expensive than the diamond now. If I do the Murray Carty three finger test here, it feels sharper than a typical thousand grit to me. Um, so I'm super impressed with that. I like that. But my favorite thing is that it held it solid with, while, while the spine was taped. I like to tape or put paper towel on the spine of my knives when I use my Wicked Edge system because I don't want to scuff up the finish that I've worked hard for or mark up the etching if it's Damascus and things like that. And every time, non, you know, without fail on a Wicked Edge, no matter how hard I clamp the two screws when it's in the binder, it always leans forward when I sharpen it or backwards when I sharpen it. So I always have to have one hand in, in place trying to keep the knife from wobbling like that. Complete pain. This held this knife so rock solid. The TS Prof is, I just love it. That may be my favorite thing about this. I, I can't tell you how awesome that was for me. So love it. Hey, that's awesome, buddy. Let's try a small EDC folder in a single clamp as well and see what happens. Now, TS Prof isn't dumb. These clamps are aluminum, and aluminum shouldn't scuff steel, which is much harder than aluminum. But remember, you're dealing with grit and hard metal bits nearby. And my experience is that those things eventually get on your clamps and all over the place and cause marks on your blade, even if they're small. I'm not saying you can shave your face with this or anything, but that's a nice edge. How long a knife will it sharpen? Well, heel to toe, this is 16 inches. And if we let the abrasive holder out even further on its arm, it can go about 24 inches side to side, maybe a little further. It might get a little tilty. I don't know. But technically, it can be done. We'll run some pros and cons. Cons first. It should come standard with a strop. Next is I wish the wooden crate packaging was durable, custom fit, open cell foam for repacking and storage in a crate. Not that big a deal. If there was some way to fold or shorten the abrasive arm bar without taking it apart to decrease the sharpener's footprint, that'd be pretty sweet too. Price is both a pro and a con. I'll tell you why it's a con first. The price just puts it out of reach for some knife lovers and that's sort of a shame. I think if an enthusiast skips a few knife purchases or gets their family to do a group buy at Christmas or birthday, it's probably still doable. Now for the pros. Number one is that it works and it works well. It's rock solid. The quality is absolutely stunning. I'm truly shocked. The sharpener, I mean, it's a thing of beauty. It really is. I never got that impression just looking at it. So I understand if you don't either, but if I'm telling you right now, you have to hold it and use it to understand this thing is as good as it gets. Looks are deceiving. This goes together simply and quickly and it comes pre-tuned from the manufacturer. I didn't really have to do any calibration. It was ready to go. I like its aesthetics, but some of you probably won't. 
It has sort of a steampunk quality, and it's got enough knobs to make me uh, look smart. Finally, let's get down to why I think price is actually a pro. The same quality and versatility costs twice as much elsewhere. And trust me, I owned and used the competition for about five years. The system you see here costs $500, and it is hands down better in every way. So as someone who has used many systems over the years, I'm telling you that to me, this price is a steal. I would pay much more for it than this. If it's out of your range, you know, I think they have less expensive diamond stones for this package instead of the carbide. Or I know they have some mid-range products like the Cadet or Blitz. I'm sure they're probably just as good. But there's a lot to see here. Um, I think the sharpener is, is worth the money and it certainly performs well and is, is much better built and put together than I thought it was. It's a very smart product. That's it. Do you guys have experience with these? Sound off in the comments section.